Then uh, our next speaker is Charlene Gonda. And Charlene is based in San Francisco. She used to do software programming. And she loves development and she loves developers so much that she decided to join the, the Uber team. And she's now, advo now advocating for the Uber platform so that you can create innovative applications with the, with the services provided by the Uber platform. Oh, I have this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, Charlene, um, I'm, we Hello. are very happy to Hello. welcome you today. And the mic is yours. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just press play here. Hopefully, it'll show up. Maybe. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see. Let's move you over here. It wouldn't be a conference without technical difficulties, right? All right, perfect. Hi, how's everybody doing? Cool, awesome. Um, hello, uh, my name is Charlene Gonda. Uh, like you said, I am a, a developer advocate in the Uber developer platform team. Uh, and today I'm going to kind of shift the conversation a little bit uh, from the interface, uh, whether it's conversational or graphical or messaging, uh, and shift it towards sort of the back end of this interface and talk about how we can make this interface a little bit more context driven, a little bit more smarter. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can use the Uber developer platform to <laughs> engineer the future and uh, change the way riders and drivers uh, interact with the world around them as they move. Um, so if you would indulge me a little bit, let's imagine a world where your house could detect that you're about to leave and maybe uh, remind you that don't forget your keys or don't forget the shopping bag, uh, and then lock the door behind you or turn off the lights as you leave. A world where not only can your devices predict that you're about to leave, but they can also tell where you're about to go or how long it'll take for you to get there and then suggest some news stories or podcasts for you to listen to uh, while you're on the way. And a world where your house or even your hotel room can predict that you're about to uh, get there and maybe uh, turn up the temperature to your ideal climate or turn the lights on with little disco lights as you arrive uh, and maybe even play you some smooth jazz. Have you been imagining it, imagining it this entire time? Okay, good, because all of that is possible with the Uber developer platform. Um, show of hands, how many here knew about the Uber developer platform before right now? Yes? Okay, awesome. I'm so happy to uh, be telling you about it because now you know. We have a developer platform and, um, uh, and this platform really enables uh, uh, apps to, uh, whether that's like a conversational interface or a graphical or messaging interface, um, to automate actions based on uh, the data that the developer platform provides. Um, so we can create this future where devices can predict when a user is about to get to a location or about to leave a location, and then be able to uh, seamlessly prepare the environment for their arrival uh, or react to their departure. In other words, I'm talking about a context-driven world. Uh, and in this way, the platform acts as a uh, IoT platform for transportation. So let me give you a fun fact. Uh, Uber is in 72 countries, more than 470 cities, with a million and a half driver partners, and we've done more than 2 billion trips worldwide. So there is a huge opportunity here to really change the way everyday riders and drivers interact with the world around them as they move. So we want to help you build moving experiences, uh, code that brings utility and value uh, and delight to people's lives as they move about. And we've built this platform uh, so that the code you write on your desk 
can move a car in Tokyo. It's like a superpower, really. And we've taken the work of making sure that something moves from point A to point B uh, safely and securely with 15,000 repos and 3,400 3, microservices. Uh, most of them are written in Python and Node, and some are in Go. And if you were wondering what that looks like, this is what it looks like. This is a, a visualization generated by an, our internal tooling showing how, connected, uh, how our microservices are all connected to each other. So we've taken all of this complexity and abstracted them out into very easy to use APIs that you can use in your own applications. And these are the four major categories. Now, we're going to uh, get an overview of all of these APIs in the context of an Uber trip. Uh, there's ride requests, trip experiences, uh, deliveries, and drivers. And then we'll dive deep into one API Trip Experiences API, so that we can talk about how to actually build that future that we were just talking about. So you may know that Uber is a convenient way to get from point A to point B. Push a button, get a ride. Uh, and the ride request lifecycle kind of looks like this. You uh, order a ride, the driver accepts, and then the driver picks you up, and then you get in the car and you're taken to your destination. Very simple. But actually, from a user's perspective, uh, there's a little bit more involved. There's that moment when uh, a user might express an intent to ride. There's the act of riding itself, the experience of riding itself. And then there's afterwards, when you accumulate a history of these rides. So this is where the developer platform comes in, and this is where you come in. Uh, the platform helps builders like you uh, help users make a decision execute on user intents, enhance the user exper experience while they're on the ride, or do something useful for them while, on your, while they're on the ride, uh, and then analyze and gain insights after they've taken a ride or multiple ones. So we'll dive di deep into this a little bit. First, to help users make a decision, uh, the API provides endpoints to help you uh, provide options to the user so that they can make the best decisions. And when they finally do express uh, that they do want to ride, um, you can, there's a set of developer tools that help deliver this intent uh, very easily. And of course, to enhance the user experience, we have the Trip Experiences API, which lets you hook into the uh, ride request lifecycle that we just talked about. And we'll dive deeper into this in a little bit. And then, after the ride is over, or after they've accumulated multiple rides, you can uh, uh, use this API to analyze and gain insights with the history endpoint or with their profile endpoint. And you can do kind of the same for uh, drivers with their uh, payment history and their trip history as well. And let's not forget, Uber also delivers things from point A to point B with the deliveries API. Okay. That was a whirlwind tour of what this platform can do. Um, but essentially, uh, like I said earlier, it enables uh, all kinds of interfaces to execute all of these functions. For example, some of the most popular conversational agents, like we were talking about today, uh, already use the Ride Request API to uh, execute on user intents when they see fit. Uh, these devices can help users make a decision and then uh, actually request them a ride. No taps required. And if you want, you can build a uh, AWS IoT button that simply, with literally one push, requests a ride for you. And this is uh, an actual example of one that a developer made with Node. You can check it out in our uh, Medium blog if you were interested. So let's take a closer look at the Trip Experiences API to find out how we can change the way riders and drivers interact uh, as they move about in the world and how we can really enhance their user experience. Uh, and this is what the Trip Experiences API is. It enables the rider to automatically notify you whenever, you, whenever they are on a ride uh, and then give you more information about that ride uh, through the API. So, um, creating a trip experience means that you can use this user data 
to provide something of value, uh, something useful for the writer as they're writing. Um, so let's take a peek under the hood here uh, and see how this works. Uh, as a separate step, you would need to connect the user's Uber account to your app um, and then get their permission to share their data. More about this in a bit. And then at some point, the writer requests an Uber ride, uh, whether that's through the app or through um, something else like their Alexa. And then the Uber, of course, dispatches that trip using the microservices architecture that we just talked about earlier. Um, but then also, the Uber API detects that a user is on a trip, and then first check, checks if uh, this user has connected their user account to um, any other third-party apps. And after that check, we can then send webhooks whenever this uh, uh, ride status changes. So when the trip is created, when the trip is accepted, when the trip is in progress, and when the trip is completed. So these come in the form of webhooks. Uh, and these are the notifications that you'll get um, to see uh, what the user is doing at this current moment. And now you can hook into this ride request lifecycle so that uh, you can augment it and enhance it. And I think it's worth noting at this point that uh, this is data, this is like very powerful uh, context data that really tells you what the intent of the user is. The intent is to go somewhere, maybe the airport, maybe a restaurant, uh, or also to just kind of sit in an Uber and then travel. Right? There's a very strong intent of travel there. And you can use that uh, to make your interfaces smarter. OK, now that we understand how this API works at a high level, let's kind of roll up our sleeves and learn how to use it. So there are four steps to creating a trip experience. There's connecting your user, detecting when that user is on a ride, getting uh, context or more information about that ride, and then using that information um, to do something for the user or even change the world around the rider. The first three steps are all about using the Uber API, and the fourth step is where the magic happens. So let's begin. But before we start, let's create an uh, app in the Uber Developer Dashboard, scroll down, find the webhook URL, and this is where you'll receive those notifications that we were just talking about. Awesome. So for the first step, connect your user to your app. You'll have to prompt the user somewhere in your app to uh, connect uh, their Uber account to uh, the app. And then when you do that, either with OA 2.0 or with single sign-on, you get this permission screen. And this permission screen is important because this is where the writer will see what types of information will be shared back and forth. And when they click Allow, um, you'll get two pieces of information that signifies that the user has indeed uh, given you permission to access this information. Their Uber access token and their Uber user ID. And your app can do some logic in the background to save that, persist it, and then now you can detect when a user is on a ride. Uh, and every time a user gets on a ride, you'll receive a webhook when this ride status changes. And it'll be received in that uh, dashboard URL that we just configured. Um, and you can use the user ID that we saved earlier, this thing, to figure out which of your users is on a ride. Rem remember that we're looking at building ways to build something uh, useful for the user while they're on the ride. So this webhook is what tells you that real time that this user is actually already riding, and you can do something useful for them. OK. Now we can get more information about the ride so that we can tell uh, where they're going, or whether they're going to home or work, et cetera. And you can use that access token and turn it into all of this metadata. Um, and now you essentially kind of have a user state for the user. You know where they're going. You know how long it's going to be. And it's good to note at this point that the amount of information that you'll get depends on what you've asked for uh, in that connect step as well. OK. So now that you know that a user is on a ride, and you also know more information about that ride, uh, you can now go on to the fourth step, which is, like I said earlier, is where the magic happens. Uh, you can use this context data, uh, this information, to um, provide 
uh, something uh, to, to automate some actions and use this context data to make your interface a lot more smarter, a lot more uh, context aware. Um, and so it's, and like I said, I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a very powerful set of context data because it tells you exactly what the user's intent is as they're traveling. So essentially, this API turns your device into something that can uh, detect your future, kind of clairvoyant. Um, so your uh, device can auto. So one of the things that you can do is automatically suggest content uh, for the user to listen to or read about while they're on the ride. And there are apps that already do this. For example, Auto Radio, not to be confused with uh, auto, uh, Uber's auto trucking subsidiary is an app that can detect how long your ride is and then be able to serve up a tailored list of news, news flashes and podcasts for you to listen to while you're on the way. Hoodline is a hyperlocal news app. And because it can detect where your destination is, it can give you a customized list of uh, news around the area of your destination. And this real-time API, uh, can enable your devices at home or anywhere, really, to be, like I said, clairvoyant, detecting when you're about to arrive so that it can prepare for your arrival. Uh, and maybe even, like I alluded to earlier, uh, our lovely robot, robot overlords can even make sure that the house is very comforting and cozy when you get home. So not only can you make your app or your algorithms or your interfaces better and more context-driven, you can make the user's life absolutely magical. So um, I'll conclude with this. As you know, uh, we've done 2 billion trips, right? 2 million point A's to point B's. And this varies by country, but if there was uh, an average of 20 minutes per trip for 2 billion trips, uh, that's 40 billion minutes of free time that we could be harnessing. And your app could captiv captivate the next 40 billion minutes of the next 4 billion trips. Um, we've only just begun scratching the surface, and you can build the next innovation. What future will you build? Keep learning and get started to build moving experiences at Uber, uh, developers.uber.com. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Um, so we actually have uh, a few more minutes before our 2.15 end time. If anybody had any questions, would you be open to some questions? Sure, yeah. Yep. Uh, waypoints is available when you have a pool ride. So um, if there's a waypoint in the middle, like if they're picking up another passenger or dropping off another passenger, then that shows up. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, there's actually a location uh, metadata as well. Yeah, like a separate from destination or pickup. Mm -hmm. Any more questions about tacos or cats? No? Okay. Yeah? As, a consumer, do you have as a consumer, do you have access to all the personal data? I saw you can look up your personal information, all those APIs. They have access to that without being a developer themselves. Yeah, uh, you mean like as a consumer, can you control sort of what your personal data? Yeah, your personal so. data. Yes, uh, there's actually a dashboard. Like the writer's dashboard gives you a uh, list of all of the apps that are con that you've connected, um, so that you can see what type of data is being shared between these third parties. And it's good to note that uh, you you would have to explicitly allow this, um, so we don't just like connect that app without your permission. OK. And if you wanted to query your actual uh, location data, you can do that personally? Yes, but you would have to create a developer app. Though. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah.